Well, good evening. Welcome to our Good Friday online service. This is a little bit different than how we usually come together for Good Friday. But I'm glad that you could be a part of this with us. Tonight's going to be a time where we reflect on why is Good Friday good and why is this Friday good? And you're going to want to have a couple of things ready to go for the interactive pieces of this service. Firstly, we're going to be receiving communion together. So if you have communion elements available, bread, crackers, juice, go ahead and get those things ready. And we'll be receiving communion after the message. The other thing we'll be doing is responding through a creative way and we're going to be making a cross and it's going to be a cross made with thankfulness now you can make this cross out of whatever you have around your home but as a way to respond to this service gather some things up and get the family together and make a cross and we're going to guide you through that later on in this service. But first, I just want to pray over the night, and then we're going to sing together some songs that go along with the theme of Good Friday and what Jesus went through on the cross for us. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for bringing us together tonight. Lord, this is a holy week unlike any other. God, we know that you have so much in store for us and we open our hearts to you tonight. We pray that you would speak to us wherever we are. And God, I pray that tonight we could know truly by your spirit why this is a good Friday and that we would leave this service in hopeful anticipation of Easter Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, let's worship together tonight. Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the father turns his face away. As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Let's sing Behold Behold the man upon the cross My sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I will 
not boast I will not boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom But I will boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer but this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you did on the cross for us.
We thank you, Jesus. Well, let's get ready to hear from Pastor Josh on Good Friday. Hey church, welcome, happy Good Friday. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us today. Um, thank you for making us part of your Holy Week experience and joining us on Facebook Live and uh, doing this thing live and commenting and stuff. It's cool that we can still experience this together even though we're in our own homes. Hey, we're just gonna jump right in. Have you guys ever thought it's weird that Good Friday is called Good Friday? I mean, when you stop and think about it, today is the day that commemorates the death, the suffering, the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's weird that we call today good, right? In the Greek liturgy, it's referred to as Holy or Great Friday. Uh, the Germans have a, uh, have a word that they call it. I'm going to butcher this one. I'm going to try. It's called Kaffreitag. Kaffreitag. Uh, if, if there's any Germans out there and you know how to say this well, you can put that in the comments. But Kaffreitag, which means Sorrowful Friday. Even here at COTR, traditionally, we call this service the service of shadows. And we usually for focus on on the suffering, the, the mourning of Christ's death. Usually we, we look at the loss and building anticipation to Easter and his resurrection. But uh, Jesus, we remember his suffering. And Jesus definitely suffered, right? In Matthew 26 and chapter 27, Jesus went through all types of suffering. He, he had to say goodbye to his friends and family. He was plotted against. He was let down by every person he loved. He was abandoned. He was arrested. He was taken to trial, sentenced to death, spit on, beaten, crucified, killed, betrayed by two of his closest friends. And this suffering was just preceding all the suffering that the early church underwent as well, right? The early capital C church, all the believers, the Christians, uh, those who were following Jesus, they were hunted down, ridiculed, martyred for their faith. And in the midst of this current pandemic, COVID-19 and the quarantine, I bet that many of you are feeling the pains of suffering as well. I'll bet some of you are feeling like it's kind of hard to wake up in the morning and call any day good, let alone Good Friday. Maybe you're feeling the weight in your soul. Maybe you're feeling the weight of financial loss, emotional weight. Maybe you're feeling sad or angry, confused or scared. Maybe you're just over the constant barrage of bad news from all of this happening. I'll bet that some of us are feeling a little bit of suffering today. Hey, now that we're all feeling uh, good, you know, and I put a smile on your face, uh, maybe we should just turn to scripture a little bit, okay? Because today I really want to turn the focus away from Christ's suffering and the sadness, the loss, but why we can actually call today Good Friday. Um, Hebrews, just the whole book of Hebrews has really been on my mind this season. Um, last week, I... One day after the Sabbath, I woke up and I said, Amy, I just felt like I was just supposed to read Hebrews today and just feel like Hebrews is speaking to us. And she said, you know what, that's crazy because I felt the exact same thing and I was reading through Hebrews. And then as I was preparing for this message, one of the supplementary texts I had was all about how Hebrews correlates to Good Friday. And so I just think that we have to spend a little bit of time in Hebrews. Before we jump to Hebrews, though, I just want to bring up this term. Have you guys ever heard the term hurting people hurt people? Well, I want to flip that it's on its head a little bit, okay? And this is one reason that we can call Good Friday good is because Jesus suffered. It's because he suffered that it's good. And that might sound weird, but the early writers, the ones that wrote Hebrew, the church was being persecuted, hunted down like I already said, right? And they, they drafted this letter, this force of encouragement known as the book of Hebrews. And there's a common theme going throughout Hebrews. And this common theme is that because Christ suffered, he can comfort those suffering. Right? I said earlier that um, hurting people hurt people. We want to flip this on its head. Hurting people can comfort hurting people. In the first, uh, just even the first few chapters of Hebrews, we're reminded that Jesus understood, understands what it's like. He understands what it's like to have a close friend turn their back on you. 
He understands what it feels like to have everyone hate you, despise you. He understands the loss someone, uh, to lose someone that you love. He understands what it feels like to be tempted and to do what you know is wrong to do. He understands what it's like to be rejected. He understands what it's like to hurt so much that it makes you question God and God's will. Have you ever experienced a loss? I bet all of you have at some point in your life experienced some type of loss and that you also ex experience somebody trying to comfort you. I think there's two different types of people that comfort you. There's the type of person that will comfort you, but maybe they've never experienced that loss. That comfort's good, and it's uh, welcome sometimes, um, but sometimes that person might not have the right thing to say. But when you are comforted by that second type of person, somebody that has experienced the same or similar loss that you have, it's a whole different depth of comfort. Um, every year, uh, uh, I try to get away, and we do this thing called Man Cave. I, I go and get away for a couple days with a couple old college buddies, and we've been doing this, I think, this is the 10th year we've been doing this. And every year, um, we've kind of all grown together or moved into a different phase of life together. Uh, you know, it was a single guy, and then we were engaged, and then we had uh, married, and then families, and now we have kids. And so every stage, we do this. And every year, it's just a time to catch up, and we do manly things like eat lots of meat, play video games, golf, talk. Uh, we, do, we just hang out and just do stuff. We don't shave, you know, we just hang out. But every time... I go, I come back feeling like a better person. Every time I go, I feel encouraged and feel like I can come back being a better me. And part of it is simply just sharing the struggles at the time I was going through as a, uh, a single guy or as looking for a spouse or as a husband or now as a father. And every time I go away, there's something in just not commiserating, but sharing pain, sharing frustration, and then finding encouragement from people in the same place of life. There's something about like, man, I've been going through the most sleepless time of my whole life. And then Tyler or James saying, yeah, I've been there too, but it gets better. There's something about just people coming around me that have experienced the same loss or pain and encouraging me. And Hebrews, that's why Hebrews was written. Jesus relates. That's one reason we can call Good Friday good. Hebrews 4 verse 15 and 16 says this. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Jesus relates to our suffering because he suffered as well. We don't have a distant... Um, aloof God. We don't have a God that just can say, you will get through this. We have a God that experienced pain, experienced death, and says, I am with you and walking with you. That's one reason we can call Good Friday good. Another reason is that Jesus intercedes for us. Hebrews 7, 25 says this. Consequently, he is able to save to the utmost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. As I was preparing for this Good Friday service, I found a section of this story that I've never seen before. In Luke 22, verse 31 through 32, it says this. Jesus is talking to Peter, um, formerly known as Simon. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. Um, but I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Jesus, knowing what was going to happen, tells Simon, Simon, trouble's coming. Before Simon even came to the crucifixion, before Simon was even tempted to deny Christ, Jesus is saying, Simon, a storm's coming. But I have gone before you and I pleaded in prayer for you. So you have, a, you have a God that relates to you in your pain. You have a God that is interceding for you in your trouble. And lastly, in John 14, God, Jesus promises the coming of the Holy Spirit. You can read this on your own. It's John 14, verse 15 through 31. And Jesus um, shares about how the Holy Spirit is coming. But I really want to focus in on this last verse. Uh, John 14, verse 27. He says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. The coming of the Holy Spirit results in the coming of peace. 
So Jesus left so the Holy Spirit could come and that you would have a constant companion. Somebody that's with you all the time. To recap really quick, Good Friday is good because of just a few things. One, Jesus suffered, and he can comfort you in your suffering because he knows what it's like. Two, you have a God that is interceding, that's going before you, even praying. Some scripture says praying when we don't know how to pray. He's praying for you. And lastly, the Holy Spirit is with you, walking you through this. Obviously, we're isolated and alone right now under the quarantine, and you're at home, and maybe you have your family, but maybe you have a roommate or spouse, or maybe you're just by yourself in your apartment or house. But you have the Holy Spirit walking with you, and with the Holy Spirit comes peace. Hey, guys, normally we conclude our service of shadows with this um, really solemn uh, exercise. Uh, We take time, we take paper, and we uh, spend moments asking the Holy Spirit to uh, show us any areas of our life that may be separating us from God. Idolatry or sin um, or anything that's just keeping us back from experiencing God in full. We write that on paper, and then one by one, we all go, we we erect this huge cross in the middle of the room. We go around and we tack it, uh, our sins to the cross. And we do this, and it's this really powerful, kind of sad and mournful feeling as the whole sanctuary is quiet, and all you hear is the tapping as people literally tapping sins and idolatry to the cross. And we leave on this quiet, somber note. Um, But we do that with anticipation that on Easter, we come into the sanctuary again and seeing the cross full, standing, but stripped bare of all those sins. Today, we wanted to do something a little differently. We told you at the very beginning is that we felt, um, through the whole staff, we felt like there was a different focus for today's Good Friday service. We wanted to actually leave on a higher note and not on the morning, but on focus on the good of Good Friday. Um, we're going to take communion a little bit. And uh, before we do that, though, I just wanted to intro with a little video. You guys may be doing this as a family. Maybe you're watching everybody. And um, I know Nora and Noble, if you're out there, you've probably tuned out. But hey, all kids, um, I want you guys to tune in for a little bit. We're going to watch a short, a short video just kind of setting up the first communion ever. And uh, we're going to watch that, and then I'll come back on in just a little bit. The story of Easter, the Last Supper. This is Jesus. hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses, when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted to eat the Passover meal that night. Jesus said, as you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Hello. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, Uh, hi. The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. The disciples found everything to be just as Jesus had said. Later that evening, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. They sat down to eat, and Jesus said that he was happy to be with everyone. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He said, Take it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus told them to do this to help remember him. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said to his disciples, This is my blood. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Jesus said, One of you eating with me here will betray me. He told them that things were supposed to happen this way, 
but that great sadness would await the one who betrays him. The disciples were very upset and asked, Am I the one? Who is he talking about? Judas asked Jesus, Am I the one? And Jesus said, You have said it. One of the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Jesus said it was the one who he would give the bread to. He gave the bread to Judas, and Jesus said, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, so Judas left at once to betray Jesus. Then Jesus comforted and encouraged the disciples. He promised them that they would have a helper come when Jesus was gone. They all sang a song to God together. Good evening on this Good Friday. I'm Catherine, and it's a joy to be here tonight to share communion with you. Things are so hard right now, and we're in a very difficult season. And there, there's a lot of bad news. There's a lot of hard reports. But we have to remember that Word tells us to think on things that are pure and lovely and virtuous and of a good report, of good news. And we have the good news of the gospel and the works of Jesus and what he has accomplished. And so let's dwell on that as we partake of communion this evening. So go ahead and grab some bread or some crackers and some juice. I like to use matzo bread. Um, if you have that, that would be awesome. But I like it because it gives me a really great visual of the works of Jesus, and I can meditate on that. I can meditate on the stripes that he took to heal us. I can meditate on the bruises and the wounds for our iniquities and our transgressions and the piercings that he took, because there's holes in here, and the piercings that he took on his head with the crown of thorns and his hands and feet with the nails and the side when the Roman soldier pierced him after he died. So let's pray and just say, thank you, Jesus. We're so thankful for what you have accomplished for us, for what you have done for us in your great love, in reconciling us back to the Father, in seeing our needs of healing and health and wholeness in our spirit, soul, and body. And we thank you and receive the fruit of that. We receive the fruit of your works that we are healthy and we are whole, that we are forgiven, that our transgressions and our iniquities, our guilt and our shame has been wiped away by what you accomplished in your body. And we thank you and we receive that. We receive the fruit of your works. And Jesus, we thank you for the cup of the new covenant, the blood of Jesus. We think about the first Passover when the Hebrews put the blood of their lamb over the doorposts and the angel of death passed over that night when it saw the blood. And the next day they were freed and they were forgiven and they were given mercy by God and favor and provision. They were redeemed They were given wisdom and guidance and direction as they went into the wilderness. And Jesus came as the Lamb of God. That Jesus came, all of that was a shadow of what Jesus would do at the cross. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you shed your blood as the Lamb of God so that we would be redeemed, we would be forgiven, we would be healed and healthy and whole in our spirit, soul, and body, that we would be set free from sin and guilt and shame, that we would have wisdom and guidance and direction as we walk out our journey with you. We thank you, Jesus, for the life in your blood, that your life saves us, that you are our Passover lamb, And all evil must pass over when it sees the blood of Jesus, 
the blood of the Lamb of God. And so we thank you, we honor you, and we receive the fruit and the life that is in your blood. So let us go out with the good news of the gospel and the good news and dwell on all the marvelous and wonderful works of Jesus. And let's magnify his works in these days and share it with others. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video and that you're able to partake in the communion with us. Um, if you didn't, weren't prepared or didn't have the right elements or whatever, I would really encourage you that after this video is done um, to just go ahead and go take communion on your own. Um, I think it's really powerful and it sets up uh, where we want to go with the rest of service today. But as you're taking communion, um, maybe you've... Uh, heard of the term Eucharist before, and it's another way of saying communion, and it means the same thing as taking the elements, the Eucharist. Um, but Eucharist comes from a Greek word. It's derived from a Greek word. I'm going to try to say this. I may butcher it, but I'm going to go for it. It says haristia, okay, haristia. And haristia means thanksgiving or to give thanks. And so when you take the Eucharist, you're actually spending time giving thanks, um, during the quarantine, Amy and I, uh, I was reminded of this show called Alone. And my mother-in-law, when I was telling her this, she's like, Josh, a little too soon, right? But hey, I, it's a really good show. It's on Hulu. Um, and basically, they take 10 people, they drop them off in the wilderness, and they just see how long they can survive. And day one, usually you just are all gung-ho. Um, you have the most energy. You're well-fed. You're well-rested. You just want to jump in and go really hard the first day to find your camp, find water source, figure out the best place you're going to be, gather brush, start building your shelter, just getting the basics to survive. But this last season that me and Amy watched, um, there's this one participant that really made us laugh. And this, uh, and this person, um, the, the first day, instead of doing all those kinds of things, the necessary things you would think you need to do to survive, she was making furniture, right? And we're like, there's no way this person is going to last. Like, she's making furniture on the day one when you should be finding food and building a shelter and clearing away the uh, brush so you can sleep well and be protected and stuff. But the thing about this person is that she kept a really positive attitude, and she would do things that made her thankful. And she lasted a really long time. In case you watch it, I'm not going to tell you what happens, okay? But she went a really, really long time. And by the end of it, she had this like little um, getaway built. She had a, a steam house, and she had wind chimes, and she made a guitar, and uh, a, basically a house. And the whole thing, her whole survival strategy was keeping a positive attitude or a heart of thankfulness. In this time of where we are literally alone and separated and isolated from our friends and family, our work people, our normal avenues of socializing, I think it's really important that we keep thanksgiving or to give thanks on our heart. You just partook of communion, which like we said, means to be thankful. And so usually, like we already said earlier, we end service of shadows with nailing our sins on the cross. This year we want to do something different. This year, we felt so strongly to focus on the good of Good Friday and not the sorrowfulness of Good Friday. This year, as you're at home, we really want you guys to build a cross out of your Thanksgiving. How it's going to look for us, um, I have some old paint sticks lying around. We're going to take paint sticks. We're going to ask the kids what they're thankful for. We're going to let them draw and color on these paint sticks, and then we're going to glue them together. It's going to be as simple as that. But I know some of you are really artistic, or maybe you uh, uh, like to paint or like to mold or clay or build. I'd love to see what you guys are going to do. Just be creative. How could you build? What do you want to do to build this cross? And how can you build it out of your thankfulness? Take time as a family with your spouse, roommate, or by yourself to just spend time with the Holy Spirit, with the Jesus who suffered and is near you, with the one that intercedes for you. Spend time. How can you be thankful? How are you thankful right now? And start turning your mind to Jesus. Purposeful with thanksgiving. Um... We also, though, want to know what you're thankful for. We thought it would be really cool if we could celebrate as a church and just to uh, really encourage each other. And so in the comments, even right now, as you're watching this, 
as you're talking to your family after the video ends, we'd love if you could just take a moment and just to share a few things that you or your family are thankful for in this season. Share them in the comments, and we just love to read through them, and I encourage you guys to come back later and to read through them. But what are you thankful for on this Good Friday? Church, I love you, and I'm praying for you. Um, before we end, I just want to read this benediction over you. So wherever you are, if you would just stand, if you're with somebody, would you just grab them on the shoulder or just um, hug them close to you? And just, uh, can we just close our eyes for a second as I pray? Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 over you. It says this. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Church, we love you and we'll see you Easter Sunday.